Most of us hear the word evolution and think of the process by which species change and adapt and maybe turn into other species or go extinct, but that's specifically the evolution of life forms by means of natural selection. The word evolution in general just means change or development, and there are plenty of other things that can evolve or change, and in plenty of other ways. For example, the universe can evolve, that is, change, according to the laws of physics. Galaxies form, planets and moons orbit, stars explode, etc. This doesn't mean there's any sort of cosmic survival of the fittest going on. That would be natural selection, not evolution. Similarly, the demographic makeup of the United States can evolve as children are born, young people move to cities, immigrants arrive in the country, and so on. In this sense, evolution just means change, and no one can deny that these changes are happening. The evidence is overwhelming. Similarly, around the time Charles Darwin was doing his research, scientists, including Darwin himself, had literally begun amassing piles of evidence that showed the nature of life on Earth had changed quite significantly over time. Our oldest rocks show no signs of life, while newer and newer rocks reveal fossilized plankton, seaweed, snails, fish, trees, insects, dinosaurs, mammals, and so on. There absolutely was and is no denying the fact that life on Earth changes, and change over time is what evolution means. What Darwin proposed with his theory of natural selection was an explanation for how this change, which is stupidly well supported by evidence, could have occurred naturally. You can think of it like the Challenger disaster of 1986. All the evidence showed that the collection of molecules named Challenger had tragically evolved from a space shuttle and its rocket boosters into a cloud of gas and debris shortly after launch. The question for scientists at the time was to understand and explain how the explosion had happened so they could prevent it in the future. Ultimately, it was the theory of frozen O-rings in the rocket boosters, popularized by Richard Feynman, that provided a satisfactory explanation for the cause of the disaster. Now, you're welcome to disagree with Feynman's explanation for the explosion, or Darwin's explanation for how life on Earth changes, but they're pretty darn good explanations for these incredibly well-documented examples of change in the universe. In the end, the universe will go on evolving regardless of whether you and I believe in it or understand it. And perhaps the best thing to do is to remember that it's okay for our beliefs and understandings to evolve, too. That's part of life, and it's the way of science. This episode of Minute Physics is supported by Audible.com, the leading provider of audiobooks across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. For example, On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life by Charles Darwin. Yeah, Audible has this as an audiobook, which is awesome and something I bet Darwin never would have imagined. You can download this audiobook or another of your choice for free at audible.com slash minutephysics. Again, thanks to Audible for making it possible for me to keep producing Minute Physics and for giving you a free audiobook at audible.com slash minutephysics.